Hi everyone, and today we've got, well, quite a mixed batch of uh, things to talk about, including one of the coalition parties, doing this later in the program, don't freak out, are sort of going off the rails with somebody that we've spoken about quite a lot on this program, going his own way. But we're sort of reporting it from a different perspective. Uh, also, some more violence in Soy 6. But this sort of grabbed my attention yesterday, uh, probably because it's a place I've been to quite often. And it looks like there are quite a few new opportunities regarding travel opening up here in Thailand, particularly on trains. In Thailand Malaysia rail cooperation expands Bangkok to Penang route approved. And this uh, is reported in cowsodenglish.com. The State Railway of Thailand announced that within two to three months, there'll be a train all the way from Bangkok down to Penang in Malaysia. And the purpose was to expand cooperation in connecting rail services between Thailand and Malaysia, facilitating travel for citizens, enabling seamless goods transportation between the two countries. Well, that's all the uh, media release word salad. Let's try and get to exactly what's going on here. There was a meeting held that approved in principle the operation of a train from Bangkok Grand Station to Padang Besar, which is uh, right on the border, to Butterworth, Penang, Malaysia. Let's just sort of see roughly where that is. So we start off uh, in Bangkok at the new Krung Tep, Happy Wat Central Terminal Station. We uh, make our way out to the west and then heading south uh, through Hua Hin and Chumpon, uh, down through Suratani. There's uh, Phuket there on the left, all the way down to the border where that black line starts. And uh, then the train is going to continue then all the way down to uh, Butterworth. And we've got Penang Island there, uh, Butterworth part of the, uh, the, the land-based side of Penang. But of course, it's uh, Penang and Georgetown that are the big tourist attractions. Well, I don't know about you, but I think that would be quite a good ride all the way from Bangkok down across the border. Could be a special type of border run down to Penang. Plenty to do there. I used to go there every three months when I did my own border runs, but I used to fly in a plane, a 45-minute journey on Firefly. I think they're still doing it every day from Phuket International Airport down to Penang. And the article goes on saying it's expected to open within two to three months and with an initial six-month trial period. Uh, something that I've written quite a lot about in the past. Uh, this is an article I wrote when at uh, the Tiger. Phuket versus Penang. The two pearls go head to head. Well, back in the 20th century when it was the place to go, Penang used to be called the Pearl of the Orient. Then when uh, Phuket turned up, uh, it became the Pearl of the Andaman. And the article says uh, there was a time when Penang was the Pearl of the Orient. For some Western travellers, the only Orient they would know outside of Singapore and maybe Hong Kong. And it was the 1950s and 60s when jet travel had just started, making the world smaller and the Western middle class were in search of new and exotic locations. And the two islands are geographically very close and they share a similar history of both European and Chinese trading heritage. Walking around Phuket Town and Georgetown will display exactly the same style of Sino-Portuguese architecture, although Penang has always had a lot more grand colonial buildings due to the uh, British colonisation of Malaya. So I know it's not a travel vlog, don't worry, we're getting into the news in a moment. Now, these are the sort of uh, travel posters we used to see back in the middle of the last century. Uh, Penang, Malaysia. Mind you, it, I don't think it ever looked anything like that. It certainly doesn't look like that now. Although there are still plenty of those uh, residential homes with the red roof. Uh, probably the biggest difference between Penang and Phuket is, well, Phuket's got fantastic beaches and Penang doesn't. All right, now let's go to uh, the US dollar versus the Thai baht. I know the US dollar goes up and down against all the other currencies, but we are talking about Thailand. And it was, well, heading in a direction whereby the US dollar was dropping in value against the Thai baht. Let's check today. Now, this chart is over the last year, and it shows this morning that uh, the US dollar will get you 34.1 Thai baht. Now this graph shows a two-year movement of the baht against the dollar 
We have to go back uh, about one year to find uh, the BART at this same exchange rate back to July 2023. And this chart goes back to 10 years and shows the uh, the lowest point of the US dollar against the Thai baht in those 10 years. Uh, back in 2020, it got to 30 Thai baht to the US dollar. Uh, you can see as we move to the left, back in 2022, it got up as high as nearly 38.3 Thai baht to the US dollar. Now that blue line sort of roughly in the middle of the two is where it is at the moment. So whilst there has been quite a sudden and swift movement of the, uh, the Thai baht and the US dollar, with uh, US citizens getting a lot fewer Thai baht than they did even uh, two months ago, it is historically somewhere sort of in the middle. So I don't think there's anything hugely concerning, although some of us do get paid in US dollars and uh, it's going in the wrong, wrong direction for us. Let's head to uh, some issues of counterfeit and this covered in calsodenglish.com, 1.7 million counterfeit items seized by the Thai government in early 2024. And the Department of Intellectual Property, from January to June this year, they had a total of 747 cases of intellectual property infringement. And uh, it involved 1.7 million counterfeit items being confiscated. Interestingly, the number of cases fell by 20%, but the number of items seized rose by nearly 34%. So the Director General of the Ministry of Foreign Trade pulled together a meeting with uh, business groups from the Thai Chamber of Commerce, the Board of Trade of Thailand, and the Federation of Thai Industries. Uh, business people expressed concern about the overall impact on consumer goods, services and investment. They cited problems such as substandard and cheap products, smuggling at borders, false product declarations and the establishment of foreign companies in Thailand which do not benefit the country or Thai consumers. Well, on the flip side of that, there are plenty of Thais that uh, enjoy selling some of those cheap and uh, copied products on their uh, TikTok shop or whatever online store they're using. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword. And among the proposals were stricter quality controls on imported goods, the introduction of tax measures to protect domestic producers, strengthening Thai companies' production and entrepreneurial skills to maintain market share and revising laws and agreements that hinder Thai trade. Well, that's all very well, and we get these regular crackdowns on counterfeits in Thailand and uh, people sort of getting lemon-lipped about uh, all the problems that the counterfeits cause, and they do cause problems. But I can guarantee I can go out today and buy any number of counterfeit items. Uh, anybody who lives here knows the places to go. Well, so do the tourists. Okay, and acknowledging our sponsors, uh, Five Star Marine, fivestarmarinepuket.com and uh, Beach House Thailand. Links in the description below to find out more about those two businesses. One taking people out on to Panga, two very special spots with bespoke charter tours and Beach House Thailand, which will allow you to uh, rent a, a beach house pretty much on the beach overlooking the Andaman Sea. So links in the description. Heading to Patia now, some more trouble in Soy 6. Drunk foreigner allegedly assaults fellow foreigner and Thai woman in Patia. Well, this guy's a, a class actor. We'll get onto what he's wearing a bit later. But at 10 past 12 a.m. on August the 20th, uh, there was a violent altercation between foreigners at the Gold Bar Beer in Soy 6. And upon arrivals, uh, authorities found a German man, Raoul Peter Malon, who was 60, suffering from a serious head injury. And he was with his uh, 27-year-old Thai wife, Pornwin Ramakun, who sustained a loose tooth. And the couple were given first aid before being transported to hospital. And a 28-year-old called Kanyarat, who witnessed the incident, reported that while she and her friends were sitting at the bar, an intoxicated foreigner began harassing them. The man accused them of causing distress to one of their friends, uh, to which Ms. Kanyarat denied. And apparently, the, uh, the foreigner became aggressive. Mr. Mallon then tried to intervene, but was allegedly punched by the foreigner, causing him to fall and hit his head on the floor. He sustained a head injury, it required over nine stitches, and the suspect also hit Ms. Kanyarat, resulting in a loose tooth. He refused to provide his ID, but called himself Michael, who was 44 years old, 
He also rose his middle finger in front of the police officers. That'd go down well. And it also says that it was later revealed that he attempted to personally settle the matter by offering compensation for the victims. So you can almost guarantee there are going to be some sort of formal charges. And that's uh, even before the fashion police have a go at him uh, with this Christine Dior sort of pyjamas. Now, just uh, checking the range of Christian Dior pyjamas, they don't really look anything like what that gentleman's got. They certainly don't have the word emblazoned on them. Check out those prices from about 100,000 baht down to, or you can get them for 57,000 baht. Uh, That will give you a good night's sleep. So a class act all the way with those knockoff Christian Dior PJs and the middle finger as well. As classy as this next person. We go to the Bangkok Post, uh, the headline, Taminat gathers support, Rao splits Plang Pracharat. Now, it is fairly complicated, this story. I won't get into too much detail because it uh, will sort of ongoing. Suffice to say, there's a spat uh, between some of the coalition partners uh, within the Plang Pracharat party. Uh, But to start off, just another indescribable offence for the fashion police to sort out. And a wide split has flowered in the leadership of the third largest coalition partner, with Secretary General and Caretaker Agriculture Minister Tamanat Prompau refusing to talk to party leader General Prawit Wongsawan and gathering supporters around him. So Prawit Wongsawan, the eight-year-old who assaulted the Thai PBS uh, journalist the other day, so classy all round. Another headline says Taminat breaks from Prawit leads 29 MPs in coalition bid. And if you don't know Taminat Prompau, it looks like all the papers have been very keen to give you a quick reminder. Captain Taminat served four years in an Australian prison after being convicted in 1994 of conspiring to import heroin into Australia. He was sentenced to six years imprisonment, served four, and was deported upon his release. And uh, from ThaiPBSWorld.com, Taminat, 59, was jailed for four years in 1994 for his role in a heroin smuggling case. Opposition politicians in 2021 tried unsuccessfully to have the Constitutional Court declare the minister unfit for office. And NationThailand.com says Taminat was sentenced to six years in prison in Australia over drug smuggling charges in 1994 and deported to Thailand after spending four years in jail. So for his part, the uh, current caretaker, Agriculture Minister Taminat Prompau, doesn't look like he'll be making his way into the new cabinet. But uh, as I said, that story's still on the move. But at least the media are very keen to remind you about some of his uh, well, past travels to the wide brown land of Australia. And with that, I thank you very much for watching today. Hopefully you're a bit more up to date with some of the things happening around Thailand. Please subscribe to the channel. That really, really helps. And we'll see you again tomorrow.